Oh. Hello YouTube, Sentinel H here for episode 5 of my Reactor Craft tutorial series. Um, so yeah, it's been a while since the last tutorial, I'm really sorry about that. Just to give you in a nutshell what happened is I, I, pre I burned myself out, pretty much. Uh, the daily uploads eventually took their toll and uh, I had to take a break for a bit. So I've, I've changed the schedule and uh, I'll be able to, the content's gonna keep, it's gonna be pretty constant now, but my workload on a daily basis is gonna be less. So you'll have lots of content uh, and I'll actually be able to, to deal with it. So. Uh, in this uh, episode, we're going to go through and talk a little bit about each of the, uh, all of the blocks that you're going to be using to build a fission reactor, which is the uh, reactor from Re Reactor Craft that runs on uranium. Well, technically I think they all run on uranium, but you know, the fission reactor, what you really think about uh, as the meat and potatoes probably of a mod like this. Um, what you can, what people think about when you th when you traditionally think about a nuclear reactor. So we're going to go through these. There are quite a few blocks that you're going to be needing. Um, we, and first, we'll start with the fuel core. Now we've already talked about the fuel core, and I think I already showed you how to make it, but it was a while ago. So just in case, um, we'll take a look. So the fuel core is crafted with. Let me just turn off any eye completely. Two fuel canisters, a hopper, uh, four steel ingots, and a base pa two base panels. Uh, and the fuel canisters are four of the uh, CDIN AG alloy and a chest. We'll get you a fuel core. You're going to need at least one of these. You're definitely going to want more, though. Now, I think the smallest reactor that I've seen someone build that runs a turbine requires four of these. Um, so, yeah, the fuel cores, they look like this. Very nice. Uh, and this is where you put the fuel pellets. So, if I put a fuel pellet in the middle here, uh, now it, it's got a fuel pellet. The fuel core has a fuel pellet. So you fill it up with fuel pellets and then it heats up. That's what the fuel cores do. And if you notice these extra slots out here, these are the slots for nuclear waste. So as the fuel core burns through your uh, uranium fuel pellets, it will um, produce various different kinds of nuclear waste. Uh, the nuclear waste does not stack so it will go into each of these slots. Um, it will only hold up to eight of them. And the more of the nuclear waste that's in here, uh, I think what uh, it starts reducing the effectiveness of the fuel core. So you want to pull this out of here very quickly. Um, so that's what the fuel core is for. So we'll just get this out of our hand so we can have an empty hand. Okay. Oops. Accidentally clicking on things, not good. Um, now, the next thing we're going to make look at is the control rods. Uh, and to make the control rods, you're going to need three of these absorption rods, which are crafted with six of the steel ingots and three of the CDINAG alloy. And that gives you one absorption rod, so you're going to need three of them to make this, the control rod, which is crafted with three absorption rods, three base panels, two steel ingots, and a 2x gear unit. Now the control rods, um, very simply, and as you can probably you know ascertain, are they don't have a GUI; they're just a block. And what they do is they're designed to uh, stop the nuclear reactor. Um, so you've got a big nuclear reactor; uh, you don't want it to obviously run away on you. So you put control rods in it. And uh, right now the control rod is down in its down state. And um, and I don't remember if you can use a lever on these. Now, um, but the control rods, uh, when you raise the control rods, uh, allows the nuclear reactions to take place in the fuel cores. When you lower the control rods, they stop the nuclear reactions from occurring in the fuel cores, uh, allows the reactor to cool down. Uh, so in case you've got to do any maintenance on it, um, or in case you're you know, in danger of it uh, going critical or something, the fuel rods can be dropped and uh, you know, prevent a catastrophe. Um, now, to go along with the control rods, you're going to want one of these, central control. Because um, what central control does is it controls the control rods. And that's crafted with a 2x gear unit, four base panels, and four circuit boards. And that gives you the central control. Now, the central control requires power. Uh, we're not going to go into too much detail about central control. Uh, in this video. I'm going to show you how it works in action in a later video, but if I pop these control rods uh, next to it, or around it, see that the central control... Oh, goodness. That sound... I didn't know that sound was going to happen. 
That is the sound that the control rods make. The central control can detect the control rods in its little GUI. It can also, I believe, uh, detect, I believe, yep, the um, fuel cores. I don't know. It detects the control rods and it tells you where they are and uh, what state they're in. And, and right now there's no power, so it can't do anything. But what you would do is you would give it power and then uh, you could use it to uh, manipulate your control rods. And in the event of an emergency, and by emergency I mean that the central control loses power, it will by, uh, automatically drop the fuel rods uh, in a scram event, I believe it's called, to stop the reactor because it, it determines that something bad's going on. So yeah, that's what central control is for. So you use these in conjunction control rods and central control. You don't need either of these things to make a reactor, let's be clear about that. These things are not required, but I wouldn't build a large reactor without them. <laughs> Unless you have a death wish. Okay, so we've also got coolant cells, because obviously you got to keep your reactor cool. So coolant cells are crafted with four steel ingots, two blocks of glass, two liquid pipes, and a reservoir. And coolant cells look like this. Oop, a little bit of lag there. They are, uh, there's no GUI, they just do their thing, but in order to do their thing, we need to fill them with uh, coolant to put water in them. Now it's got water in it. Now I imagine that as these things, you know, absorb heat and dissipate it, they, the water will evaporate off, so uh, you might need to pump water into these. But I, I haven't used them yet, so I don't really know. But coolant cells you can use to help keep your reactor cool. And now we've got neutron reflectors. Now neutron reflectors are again something that you don't need. I don't know if you can hear that, but there is a serious thunderstorm brewing overhead. <laughs> Not in the game, in where I, where I am. So, neutron reflectors, I know they're not, ne not a necessary part, but you can definitely use them, is crafted with a steel block surrounded by graphite. And graphite is just coal dust in a smelter, or in any kind of furnace, you know? And the neutron reflector, what it does, well, it does exactly what it says it does. It reflects neutrons. The way that the fuel cores work is that uh, they, as they absorb the, uh, as they burn off the um, nuclear fuel, uh, neutrons shoot out from them in uh, the four cardinal directions around them. And uh, those neutrons, when they hit other fuel cores, create... Uh, they cause that fuel core to emit a neutron, and that's what causes your chain reaction, which uh, increases your uh, heat levels and stuff, and that's what you want. Uh, neutron reflectors, if a neutron hits it, I don't know if it's 100% or if it's a chance to happen, but the neutron reflectors will reflect the neutron back the way it came so that it can re-encounter some fuel, uh, fuel cores, and uh, basically you're, you're going to reuse that neutron uh, to increase the efficiency of your reactor, or you know, increase the the heat. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that's what it does. <laughs> so you can uh, you can put these on, around the reactor and, or in various spots to sort of you know redirect neutrons back to your fuel cores a second time. But you don't need them; they're not required. Okay, uh, and then you've got the opposite of a neutron reflector, which is a neutron absorber. Now, obviously, you can't have these neutrons just flying through your world all willy-nilly because they cause terrible damage to things. So, uh, what a neutron absorber does is absorb the neutrons. And it's crafted with a steel block and four depleted uranium or eight depleted trezo fuel from that high-temperature gas reactor we were working on last time. Either of those recipes gives you a neutron absorber and you just place it down, it's a block, and when a neutron hits it, bleep, it gobbles it up and the neutron is absorbed. Now, a significantly cheaper alternative to neutron absorbers, although I don't really know, there might be a reason you want both, uh, concrete. <laughs> concrete. I like to use concrete. Um, you got to stop the neutrons from getting out of your reactor and what you do and the way to do that would basically just be to surround the reactor in several layers of a material that can absorb uh, the neutrons and concrete is one of those materials it's crafted with a block of gravel a block of sand and a block of clay and a bucket of water and that gives you four blocks of concrete and what you would do is after you've built your reactor and you're satisfied with uh, the layout of everything you would surround it and two, maybe three layers of uh, concrete all the way around, and that would just uh, stop any neutrons from getting out. Uh, as they encounter the concrete, they 
they they they will just be uh, gobbled up and, and destroyed. So uh, y you're going to need a couple layers of concrete to do that, um, or you could use. I believe just one single layer of neutron absorbers, but concrete significantly cheaper. I like to use concrete when I build reactors, um, but you know, that's what the concrete does. Now these two blocks uh, over here are not um, optional at all. You must have these, and we'll talk about why. So the spent fuel container is what ha what you do with all of your nuclear waste. So as I mentioned before, the, f the uh, fuel cores will accumulate nuclear waste and you need to get it into the spent fuel container. And the spent fuel, fuel container is crafted with a chest, four cooling fins, and four steel ingots. Place it down, it looks like this. With this checker pattern. Yep. Open it up and it's got quite a bit of storage space in it for nuclear waste. Ooh, that was a loud one. I love thunderstorms. <laughs> and it's starting to rain right now. Um, lots of storage space for spent uh, for uh, nuclear waste. Um, so when you pull that out of your fuel cores, you stick it in here. Now, what the spent fuel containers are for is basically what you would do is you would build some sort of a pool of water, or in my case, just maybe use the ocean. Place your spent fuel container surrounded, surrounded by those water blocks and then you would pump, pipe, the uh, spent fuel, the um, nuclear waste out of the fuel core and into the spent fuel container. Um, once the nuclear waste gets into the container, the container will allow it to decay naturally uh, while the water keeps the container cool and the whole thing contains the radiation. Okay? Because radiation in, in uh, reactor craft is pretty darn nasty stuff. Um, so, yeah, this is what you do with the nuclear waste. It goes in here, and what this is designed for is it allows the, the more radioactive fuel, the fuel with a much shorter half-life, in order to decay away into more stable ele uh, elements, um, which you would then send to this the nuclear waste disposal drum, the ultimate resting place for your nuclear waste. Unless you want to do some sort of a cheaty thing where you drop it through the void or something, I don't know. The nuclear waste disposal drum is crafted with a chest, four base panels, and four steel ingots. When you place it down for the first time, you do get an achievement. I've already gotten it. It looks really cool. I quite like the look of it. And this is designed for long-term, oh, I should say permanent, storage, for all intents and purposes, permanent storage of your nuclear waste. And it's got, as you can see, far fewer slots than the um, spent fuel container. It's got 12 slots. And the long-term, long-lived nuclear f uh, waste, you set, put it in this drum, you store it far away because it, it will emit the, I mean, the radiation, if you get near this drum, you will, you could, you can get irradiated. Uh, but you just keep the nuclear waste in here forever. Now, it's true that eventually the nuclear waste would decay away, but some of these nuclear wastes have such a long, long half-life that it's unlikely that it ever would um, decay away. So, this is what you do eventually. This is where your nuclear waste will uh, end up. I'm not sure. I think there's probably ways you can abuse other mods in order to destroy, to eliminate the nuclear waste. But it is Reika's intention with the with Re reactor craft that this be the final resting place for all of your nuclear waste. Because the last thing you want is for the nuclear waste to be sitting on the ground as an entity, because that's how the radiation spreads uh, and and screws everything up. So these two blocks, you will need them. Unless, like I said, you found some cheeky way to get around it. Which there probably are a million of them if you're in Monster Mod Pack, which is where I'm at. I'm going to finish this series in Monster Mod Pack. Uh, Reika's mods are now up to uh, version 1 of version 1.7 of Minecraft. Um, but I'm going to finish this series in Monster because that's where I started it. So, for a quick recap, because um, this this, we're pretty much finished. For a quick recap, fuel cores, obviously necessary. Control rods and central control, not strictly necessary, but a very, very, very good idea, especially for larger reactors. Coolant cells, not strictly necessary. 
Neutron reflectors, not structurally necessary. Neutron absorbers, not structurally necessary. Concrete, well, you're going to have to insulate your reactor somehow, and I like to use concrete. Spent fuel container, totally necessary. Nuclear waste disposal drum, totally necessary. And of course, if you want to get power out of your system, you are going to need steam boilers, steam lines, steam grates, and turbines. Just to give you a brief idea about what we're going to be uh, going over in, in, in the next video on Tuesday, which is when the next episode is going to come out, that's when I'm going to have a new room added onto the base, and I'm going to have an actual reactor built. Um, you can build reactors in several different ways. Um, I saw a tutorial on nuclear reactors, and one of the reactors that that guy had built was simply like this. It was simply four fuel cores, and then he had surrounded them in steam boilers. And the idea there was that as long as you kept enough water in these, that they would never, that the uh, steam boilers themselves could keep this cool. Um, which may or may not be true. I'd have to run it. He was able to run it long term. Um, but yeah, as you get more complex or and larger reactors that you want to have output more power, uh, control rods and central control are going to become more important. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's it. These are all the blocks you're going to need to build a fission reactor as well as a power source for your central control if you're using it. Um, and a water source, obviously, for your steam boilers. So I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Uh, Tuesday, the next episode of this will come out. Um, tomorrow, Friday, uh, the next episode of the Let's Play of Young's Cast Complete will come out. And... Um, as soon as I uh, am able to, I will begin a tutorial series uh, on uh, Chromatic Craft. Um, I'm going to give Rayka some time to get it into a, a stable enough state that he thinks it's uh, a good idea to do a series on that. But anyway, hope you've enjoyed. I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.